Here we go. Most of my first memories have to do with hockey in some sense. I think I'm lucky because being the oldest in the family, I actually have memories of, of watching my dad play. I was probably three or four. Dad used to uh, throw bubble gum on the ice, so I'd go, that's kind of how I learned how to skate. I'd just go chase after it. During warm-ups, I remember we'd run down to the glass and he'd just kind of post up next to the glass where, where we were standing and, and pound on the glass a little bit. Your focus is so singular when you get started. You're, everything's focused on hockey and the game. When you have kids, that singular focus certainly uh, turns to uh, a little more family. We had a pretty interesting life growing up. We are all born in different parts of the country, plus Canada. Will's born in Ottawa. Um, I'm a, a Philly baby, a Flyers baby. Emma's a, a Whalers baby in Hartford. Declan was at the lake, which is kind of our home base. Well, where you live, I think a lot of times when you have kids, you make a lot of decisions, you know, you move into a new city, you get involved with a new team. Where's the best school district? Uh, where's the best place for the family to live? Uh, you know, when you're making those other decisions, uh, family basically plays into all your decision making. Say a player has been in the city for a while, he might be coming up to free agency. Grass might be greener on the other side, but uh, what if your family's extremely happy right where you are? I think he's an extremely good coach just because he knows when to, when to be hard on you and when to kind of leave you alone. It's, he's not always on you, but he, he knows, he lets you know what, when you need to be better, but he lets you be your own player. My favorite dad coaching moments, I remember I was in Cape Elizabeth playing for Cape Fleet, the Cape Elizabeth girls, Wayne Fleet team, and I remember I was going up to take a penalty shot and I'm looking for him in the crowds and I'm seeing him up there and he's like no stick in hands, and you just kind of like looking at me like, <laughs> I'm like what is that, like triple deke, like one, two, three. But um, so even when we're not on the ice, he's always coaching. I think he knew when he had to push and when you were better off being left alone. But getting the chance to kind of have that one-on-one -on -one attention with someone who knows the game so intimately was pretty special. The Stanley Cup, it's, uh, it's been a, a pretty powerful draw in our family for a lot of years. The Stanley Cup's so hard to win. Four series, and uh, it's such a grind and such a, a long stretch, and uh, the emotional uh, toll that it takes, the physical part of it, that goes into uh, the players, to the coaches. I think when he goes to the rink, he gets really in, in focus and intense, but when he comes home, that's his time to like relax and he doesn't really want to talk as much about hockey just kind of let him be but when he gets to the rink it's it's, uh, it's go time and it's intensity you can tell how how much the games mean to everyone and how how long they long the season is and how long they've worked for it it's definitely a different different feeling in the playoffs it's amazing what has to go right when to win the cup it was the first time i saw my husband cry it was the night they they lost those games because you're, you're that's your quest that's your goal you know so in 19 years as a player he never did accomplish that goal. So as a coach, it was so amazing that he was able to do it. We definitely got very superstitious around the playoffs. I remember, um, you know, if, if we had had chicken for dinner the night that they won, then we'd have chicken again the next night. Or he had to take the same car to the rink or use the same coffee mug, things like that. People probably saw him wearing the same exact tie the entire series because if they won one game and he's wearing this purple tie, he wore the purple tie the next game. Seeing the players after, I remember Duncan Keith in the corner, <laughs> like looked kind of like a homeless guy because he was like, had no, you know, he was, had, I don't know, skin and bones and that is hair, you know, just down and in that corner, but just, he did it, and these guys were just warriors. Because there's a lot of meaning, I think that uh, uh, something you work so hard to get, and it took me a few years to get a hold of that thing. <laughs> it was a, uh, a special night. Watching that very kind of unglamorous work behind the scenes made it all the more special when he did have that success in the end and we got to be there to celebrate with him. I remember running out on the ice and seeing him and it was just pure elation. 